Welcome to the last video in our Hidden Art of Homemaking series. All right, guys, welcome back. This is our Hidden Art of Homemaking series. I am Laura Wilkie with Down Home with Lemon Pie, and this is going to be the very last video in this series, guys. This is video 13. So 13 videos. If you missed any of them at all, they are listed in the playlist linked below called Hidden Art of Homemaking. This is a great book about being a mom, motherhood, all things wonderful in the home. It is by Edith Schaefer. I do encourage you to get your own copy. If you haven't already, it is available on Amazon and I don't even think it's very much. I want to say like 10, 11, $12, something like that. And this was written uh, about 50 years ago, guys, and it's still incredibly relevant today, even possibly more so than it was when it was written. Um, I do recommend it. Like I said, though, this is kind of my highlighter book. You can tell mine is in a little bit of a shabby condition because that tells you how much I've been using it, especially with this series. And um, it has just been so exciting going through this with you guys together. So um, we are going through chapter 14 today. So let's get started. All right, so chapter 14 is called Environment, and this one is kind of a culmination of the entire book um, put into one chapter. Not the content, but what the book is trying to get across. And so Environment, that's where we're going with this chapter today, and it says, the idea that you are involved in an environment which has an effect on you drawing you into something the artist wants you to feel and think rather than giving you an opportunity to observe and judge. Um, a fresh understanding of an old truth, okay? She says, we all have been born into an environment that affects us. The environment of the 20th century, 21st century, um, and the kind of people we are and are becoming is affected by the moment of history into which we have been born and the degree of our acceptance of or resistance to the general trend. I really love that whole quote because I, I saw a quote once that's kind of similar to that, that talks about raising your kids. And it says, um, you know, we shouldn't worry about trying to juggle raising them in this crazy world that we live in, but rather think about how God has uh, created and placed them at this point in history because they are here to do something and it's relevant to now and that they're going to be fine. Um, that's all about to trusting God with our children. But um, okay, let's continue. I mean, we are an art form, whether we think of it or not, and whether we do anything about it or not, that's probably the key phrase here. We are an environment. Each one of us, we're an environment for the people with whom we live, the people whom we work, the people whom we communicate. And she goes on, um, we're in an environment which is affecting people around us. People who come across us or walk into our presence become involved. I love that so much. It's so much about how you are to the world. And it's really, really good because sometimes we don't realize this. And I have some great things I'm going to point out here. We produce an environment other people have to live in. That's true, especially true as moms. We should be conscious of the fact that this environment, which we produce by our own very being can affect the people who live with us or work with us. The effect on them is something they cannot avoid. We should have thoughtfulness concerning our responsibility in this area. In the power of the Holy Spirit, we can be an environment that is really an art form God can use, can be using directly to affect and involve other people. It's so true. I love this. This is really just a culmination, like I said, of this entire book, talking about how God is using us as moms in our place where we are right now. It's an amazing thought that we are the art form God can use in this area of environment to involve others who come into our presence. Okay, she goes to a whole bunch of examples here, conversations, attitudes, um, our lack of response or our, our hardness or our compassion. She continues on. I'm not going to list them all because once again, I do recommend you purchase this book. So I can't just go through word for word. But then she says, the expectancy that God can intervene and do something in this moment of history and doing something practical to show the expectancy in prayer affects the attitudes other people are going to have to their troubles. Um, 
so now she's talking about it's not just your the way you act or your countenance the way the way you others perceive you it's also uh your appearance the way you care for things in the bedroom the bathroom the kitchen um do you leave the beds unmade do um you know when you think about this part right here i tell my daughters this all the time because i have um, read a quote once and it was talking about daughters how daughters really take over the whole atmosphere of the home they they kind of set the mood the tone for the home and um if you just have boys i'm sure boys do it too but um it the quote that i read was specifically referring to daughters and it was saying how daughters set the whole tone for the home and when i start thinking of it that way it's super super true um you know moms too but we are daughters but it was talking about how you know, when you've got like a moody teenager, it seems like everybody's in a mood. But when you have a joyful girl or a joyful young lady or a joyful teenager who's helpful and kind and loving to the little siblings, all of that, everybody kind of has this flowery um, like existence. Everybody's excited and joyful and kind. And it does it. It's whatever um, feelings you're having or exerting the other people pick up on that as well and start to copy. And that's basically what she's talking about here. Um, you know, if you are tired or discouraged or irritable, frustrated, hopeless, that energy begins to ebb away and affects other people in an ugly manner. Oh my gosh. How phrasing, like the phrasing here is crazy, right? So, um, and then she talks about the opposite of that. So feeling a surge of accomplishment and energy when you're joyful, you're an inspiration, when I love this, this little phrase here, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about it. She says, dresses so cheerily that you feel the sun must be shining and have to look again to realize the sky is still gray. Have you ever met people like this that they're just something about them and they are just beautiful and it's like there's just no sadness or fear or anxiety or anything in them at all. It, it's just everything is so wonderful and thankful and happy and joyful. And um, we have somebody in our home, in particular, one of my children, that is exactly this. And when that person has kind of a rough time or a rough day, we all notice. And But most of the time, that person is like this little flowery butterfly that walks around spreading joy to everyone else. And I know it may not always be the same and it may not even always be the same person, but that is kind of the goal is to have that kind of presence on others. It says, um, this is something that's kind of humbling. Even if there were no other people in the world to observe other than the one you're living with, such things as careful dressing, looking beautiful, artistic or original, making uh, makes an aesthetic difference to the person who wants to feel a special atmosphere on this special occasion. What a wonderful way to say when your children leave home and leave the nest, don't give up on life. It doesn't mean that you are done in life. There's so many things that are still beautiful and wonderful about you and purposeful in your life and you need to find those and um, dive in basically okay we need to be covered with his righteousness rather than our sins we cannot go to heaven in our filthy rags of sin but as jesus died he not only washed away the rags but provided us with white linen gowns he has prepared the garment for us by living a sinless life so god is specific about the environment of heaven no spot, no dirt, no sin is to enter in or spoil it. Okay. Similarly, here in this life, a Christian should be an environment which is helpful to the people with whom he lives. Not just a matter of dressing nicely and tidiness, but also of character, spiritual life. And it's worth considering what sort of an art form we are. We are either being what the Holy Spirit would have us be, or we are hindering his work in us and through us. That's pretty much the only two options. You're either working for God or you're not. Um, he was creating an environment um, in the beginning when God created the world. He said it was good and then sin spoiled it. But 
Christians who are restored to relationship and fellowship with God, saved Christians, should ask that they might be an environment that is conducive to others wanting to come to God also. Of course, we must be willing to have little, to live in frugal conditions, to have no security financially, and to depend utterly upon God to supply what would enable us to do his will. But sacrifice does not mean ugliness, nor does it mean carelessness. There is no place where one cannot plant ivy over the mud hut or put a flower on the stump. There was nowhere in the world where it's not important to remember that we are not only must be thoughtful of beauty, but also thoughtful in the area of our own responsibilities as an environment. So right here, she is basically saying, you have no excuse. And I love it because it's humbling. We need that. We need to be told that um, we really don't have an excuse for living a dreadful life, a lazy life, a careless life, a... Um, just a life that's not, not wonderful and beautiful. That's what God has given us. Sometimes I see or I'll hear Christians talk about how they're just waiting for Christ to return. Like they're not living for God, um, as, especially really. They're doing good things. They're good people, but they're not like going out, um, spreading the gospel. They're not doing anything to help in their home or to make the life of others better. They're just kind of waiting. And it's easy to feel that way because we have been told since forever that Christ is almost here. And we had the whole Left Behind series. We had the millennium where it was the end of the world. Um, and we've had several since then. And it is easy to feel like it's never coming. We're just going to wait, you know? And this is like our reminder that we don't need to live life like that. God wanted so much more for us, even us in this time period in history where we live right now. Um, whether you have a home or not, we don't have a home right now. We're in our RV, but we can make it beautiful and wonderful for us as well. Um, it doesn't have to be just humdrum and boring. I was just outside yesterday picking some wild herbs and things that I found growing, St. John's wort and um, some wild oregano that I found growing. And I have them upside down hanging in our living room right now. And you know, just because we are in an RV does not mean that we can't continue to live our lives, right? And just because you may not also be where exactly where you wanna be in life or the beautiful home or whatever, doesn't mean that you can't live your life for God or have a beautiful life even. So I do love that kind of little reminder. This next story is absolutely, um, it's like, it's like a little bit of a punch in the gut. Really, this one is. So she's talking about some people in Africa and they live there and they had interacted with different kinds of missionaries. Okay. They had been in their homes. They had been to mission type schools. Um, for missionaries or that were funded by missionaries. And what they noticed, okay, this little quote here that I'm about to tell you is probably going to shock you. It's going to wake you up. It's going to be one of those things that you're like, wow, yeah, we need to make a change. And it's not even a huge quote, okay? It's a little thing, but when you read it and you think about it, it's huge. And it says, these are people who were not Christians, okay? They asked them about Christianity, what they thought about Christianity. And this is what they said. Okay. These are people that are in Africa are not Christians. They've experienced Christians. They've met Christians. They've been in their areas, their um, schools, their homes, different places. This is what they had to say about it. The thing which had turned them away from Christianity was the lack of beauty in the missionaries homes. And they were speaking of physical beauty. If that's not like a wake up call, I don't know what is, but these people literally were turned away from Christianity because they saw how a Christian um, was living or many Christians were living. And these Christians felt like I'm sure it doesn't say, but I'm sure they felt like, you know, we are like these martyrs and we don't get to have a lot. So we're not going to, um, we're just going to trudge forward and be appreciative and da, 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 da. But they were not creating beauty in their homes or their lives. And these people 
they are trying to win them for Christ. And that is the thing that it didn't matter what they were saying, because the thing they noticed was that the way they were living was not beautiful. They were literally looking at them and saying, that's what a Christian is. I don't want that. And that's the world we're fighting right now, because the world that, you know, will lie to us and tell us all these things are beautiful that we need in our lives and they're sparkly and glittery and everything's in our face. And that is the competition we have right now. So it is really humbling to me. I put an exclamation point on that quote because I just, I thought it was really, um, like I said, like just really good. It was really one that's going to stick with you. She says, I'm sure they would have felt that they had a standard of living much higher than the people among whom they worked, talking about the missionaries. They would have been astonished at the sensitivity to beauty and at the sharpness of the criticism and at the resultant turning away from Christianity, which these boys linked with a lack of beauty. I'm sure there's no place in the world where your message would not be enhanced by your making the place more orderly, artistic, and beautiful with some form of creativity, some form of art. Okay, last quote of the entire book. Last sentence in the entire book. It goes without saying, too, that the environment which is you should be an environment which speaks of the wonder of the creator who made you. That's it. That's all there is to it, guys. Um, it's beautiful. If you need to go back and watch some of these videos for reminders and tips, I do encourage you to do that. Like I said, the um, every single chapter I've gone through it um, with you guys, and they are all linked in a playlist linked below called The Hidden Art of Homemaking. It's super good. Again, you're going to want to reference this, so I do encourage you to jump online or jump to your thrift store or wherever it is that you find your best deals on books and see if you can pick it up because it is one that you're going to want. You're not only going to want it for yourself, but you're going to want it for the future, the future generations, for your daughters, your children, everybody beyond you. Um, it's good. It's a good one. So thanks guys for joining me. We're going to take a break from um, our parenting and motherhood Mondays for a little while while we get situated for homeschool. On So this um, next few weeks, I'm going to just be focusing on homeschool Fridays, which is homeschool fellowship Fridays. I'm excited for you guys to join me. I'm going to be sharing with you guys all the things related to homeschool coming up with the new school year and all of those. And then we have a new homeschool book, just like we went through this one chapter by chapter. We're going to go through another one as well. So I am excited for that as well. We'll get started on that probably in the fall. I was hoping summer, but it didn't happen. So probably in the fall. Um, all right, guys, thanks for watching. If you haven't already do share the videos and subscribe. I'll catch you guys next time.